Thanks for joining us and welcome. I'm with Daryl Jordan-Smith, who's Chief Revenue Officer at Wind River. Daryl, lovely to see you. Right, welcome to be here. So, Daryl, you are a regular contributor at Telecom TV, but this time you're wearing a different hat. So tell us about your new role at Wind River. Well, thank you for the pun. Um, my new role at Wind River is really focus on actually what we can do with you know real-time high-performance uh, operating environments and infrastructure at the edge of the network. So we're very focused on doing that in, in aerospace and defense, in manufacturing, in uh, industrial-based use cases, medical and obviously telecommunications. So what do you think is the biggest opportunity for Wind River to solve in the telecom industry? Connecting the edge to the network, I think, is the biggest opportunity for us um, as a company. Mission critical, highly performant Linux based platforms that sit at all elements of the edge of the network. And we're trying to solve that problem. How do we bring all of those devices and the telemetry into the network so we can do interesting things with our partners in that particular space? So, for example, we're working very closely with Vodafone. We're working very closely with Elisa. And we recently announced a major opportunity that we're working through with Telus. And obviously, Verizon itself are, are really sort of focused on leading the way in terms of actual large scale deployments at facilitating not just the network at the edge, but also looking at how we actually help them monetize the edge. So, for example, the car that we have here on our booth is an example of where we can provide vehicle to vehicle communications, and you can actually idealate uh, essentially what services might be available across those, those, those segments and those industries. Leveraging what we've done and learned over 40 years at Wind River around connecting what we've done already in auto, in, you know, in aerospace and defense, what we do in manufacturing, what we do obviously in telecommunications now. That's, that's a very important ecosystem. So the biggest opportunity, I think, is how do we connect all of these, these separate devices in these different areas, manage and work with those ecosystems and those partners in order to solve those problems to deliver more revenue and opportunity for our customers in telecommunication context. Daryl, according to you, what is the state of Open RAN globally currently? Do you think it's at a tipping point like many people seem to think at the moment? And what are the key contributors to that? I think we are at a tipping point. Now, the reason I think that is because technology in both hardware and software has actually matured a lot over the last two or three years to the point where we're seeing tens of thousands of deployment nodes in the network, as it were. And we're seeing some very big clients move in that particular direction. With the disaggregation that ORAN provides, it also drives innovation. So governments, both European, US governments and others around the world, want to drive innovation into the network. And ORAN really enables a lot of that. Now, with companies like Intel and NVIDIA and many others in the, in, in the silicon space, the, that technology is evolving very quickly. So you're actually seeing at a cost per core reju reduce so much so that the TCO, the business case for ORAN, is now becoming very, very, very real. And with all the work that we've done around blueprinting, blueprinting sorry, actual uh, implementations, we can actually take a lot of the cost out of actually actually rebuilding it yourself. Because in ORAN, because it's disaggregated, the telecommunications company actually, in some instances, acts as an integrator or works with an integrator to do all the integration points. So with those blueprints, our work in that space, our ability using technologies like Conductor, for example, to do provisioning across very large areas in order to reduce what they call truck rolls and, and people and engineers going out on site, we can actually deliver the TCO for the very first time in a very significant way. Now, Daryl, let's talk about cars. In fact, the car, the car you are displaying here at MWC this year, what is it all about? Well, it's a really a great example of how telecommunications and the automobile is coming together. Um, and in a very crude way, it reminds me of what happened when I first, you know, we're talking around 2000, where people said we need to take music, a camera and a phone and put them together. And now everyone has that, you know, your phone is actually an extension of you. It's a wallet and other such things. A car is an extension of that. 
in many ways. It's really a data center on four wheels that are collecting telemetry. And with the electrification and hybrid and other technologies in the automobile industry evolving, we see a great opportunity to interconnect the car through the network to deliver new safety type services, newer technologies, and make that an extension of an individual and new business models will form because of it. And Daryl, finally, how are you finding life at Wind River? Oh, I love it. It's a great company, uh, has great heritage. My previous company, great heritage as well. Wonderful people to work with. And I'm really excited about the opportunity before us. Daryl, thank you very much. Thank you.